everyone, a very, very good evening and a very, very warm welcome to the session. I hope you guys are doing absolutely fine and amazingly well, taking good care of yourselves and your loved ones. Sister Kal Namaskar, Bonjour, Adab. Hum karne wale hain. Aaj hamara session on lives and villages and towns during the ancient period in India. But before we begin with that and I explain you about the chapter and the topics, let me quickly introduce myself. But you mean I'm Ankana and I'm an expert for social sciences at MBI. I come with an experience of more than nine years in the field of education. And I've taught both online and offline and I specialize in social science and English. As you know, I have done my studies in the field of humanities. Manasvi, Sham, good evening. Please also let your friends know that we have started with this session so that they do not miss on it. Now talking about this chapter, but this chapter is a little lengthy, a little big. So these are all the topics in which we can divide this whole villages, towns and trade. Steps to increase production, life in village, finding about the ancient cities, lives in cities, ancient cities with their different functions, coins that were used in the crafts and crafts person during the ancient period are the topics that we will be doing today. ये पूरा हम आज करने वाले हैं उसमें ये सारे concepts जो हैं वो हमारे cover होंगे तो topic होने वाला है steps to increase the production in villages life in a village during ancient India finding about as we have seen the cities how the cities were how the coins were being produced what were the functions इसमें हम iron tools की discovery कैसे villages में irrigation agriculture ये सारी चीजें होती थी ठीक है the gram भोज का then the green patties the Dasa Karmakara, urbanization, how did the cities, establishment of cities started, all of these things. Hi Naveen, hi Arod, uh, Aridde, how do I pronounce your name? It seems a little difficult for me. Hi Karthik Jain, Aradde hai kya? Kyunki Y ke baad A nahi dikh raha hai mujhe to, Aradhi dikh raha hai mujhe. So shayad Aradhi hai, Aradhe hai, pata nahi. Aap mujhe bata dena, what is the correct pronunciation? So all of these are the concepts that we'll be discussing. So let's get started. So today, जब हम देखते हैं, genetically modified food products have made their way to our dining tables. आप देखते हो red color की radish, banana जिसको काटो तो kiwi निकल जाता है. What not? There's so many variations. Hybrid food, where जहाँ पे एक plant जिस seed को use करके भी वो producing thousand kgs of wheat on a plot. Same plot पे उस seed को variation एक use करके भी के now produce triple the time. So, so much of evolution and development has happened around this. Who would have thought that there would be a time when there was absence of even the basic tools made farming beans as tough as conquering Mount Everest without a hiking gear. Aaj humare liye sab kuch kitna asaan hai. Ya har ek jiz ki solution hai. Barish nahi ho rahi hai. If it's not raining, we'll have irrigation facilities. Even in the places where there is less rainfall, you can have good amount of agriculture with artificial methods, man-made methods. But there did exist a time. Ek vakt aisa bilkul hua karta tha, jaha pe ek tool bhi nahi tha, ek kudal bhi nahi thi. There was no axe, no sickle, none of these tools, nothing to plow the fields and people were still going ahead with agriculture. And it's difficult for us to imagine because there are so many options available these days. Imagine planting an entire field with only sticks and you wore bare hands. So, if I tell you today that you will not get anything, you will get nothing, no tool from my side. You have to do, you have to grow only one plant. Okay, you have to grow only one plant with your bare hands. I'll probably give you a stick or you figure out a stick. Create your own tools with the stems and all trees around. And you have to go ahead and plant it. And you have to go ahead and do the farming. You will be actually, your mind will be blown, not in a good way. But with shock that what is ma'am saying. But people were actually surviving like that. Log waise hi survive kar rahe the. After considering this challenge, let's learn how early agriculture actually underwent a revolution when iron tools or new irrigation practices were introduced. So when the old system used to exist and the new ones started coming in, the changes, the developments, how did the whole system shift and how was it before and after? वो हम समझेंगे and of course a lot of other things. How did urbanization, the concept of urbanization came in? So, बच्चे iron tools का usage जो है, 
one second this should be actually playing i don't know why is it not okay so iron tool ka usage kab hua to as you would know iron was not really known to people iron tools jo hai uske bare mein logo ko idea nahi tha people used to work with stone and woods and whatever was easily available jo aas paas mil jata tha humans usko hi utilize kiya karte the in the best way possible but then they started this making discoveries नए नई चीज़ों की खोज होने लग गई नए नए इन्वेंशंस होने लग गए एंड आयन फाइनली बिकेम अ पार्ट ऑफ अर लाइफ एंड इन फैक्ट इमेजिन आर लाइफ विदाउट आयन विदाउट अ नाइफ विदाउट अ स्पून विदाउट डिफरेंट यूटेंसिल्स विदाउट डिफरेंट मशीन्स कार्स एवरी थिंग विच हैज़ वन वे और दी अदर यूटिलिटी ऑफ आयन इन इट इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट बट देर वॉज अ टाइम वेर डिड नॉट एग्जिस्ट सो वेन डिड वी रॉली स्टार्ट यूजिंग इट अराउंड थ्री थाउजेंड ईयर्स अगो वैसे तो काफ़ी समय हो गया है तीन हज़ार साल काफ़ी होते हैं हम अभी तो दो हज़ार तेईस में ही हैं ए डी के तो दिस वॉज बिफोर क्राइस्ट एरा इट सेल्फ बट फिर भी तीन हज़ार साल पहले नहीं हुआ करता था आयन टूल्स का एग्जिस्टेंस लार्ज कलेक्शन फाउंड इन द मेगलिथिक ब्यूरियल्स तो जब हम जा कर के स्टडी करते हैं हिस्ट्री में चीज़ों को फाइंड आउट करते हैं वैन वी डू द डिगिंग एंड फाइंड आउट वेरियस थिंग्स दैट एज बैक टू थ्री थाउजेंड वी सी आयन मटीरियल्स प्रेजेंट ओवर दे एंड इट शोज द एविडेंस ऑफ इंक्रीज यूजेज अराउंड ट्वेंटी फाइव हंड्रेड ईयर्स को विच मीन्स लगभग तीन हजार साल पहले डिस्कवरी तो हो गई लेकिन उसका फुल फुल यूटिलाइजेशन शुरू नहीं हुआ था it properly started being utilized around after 5 years of its discovery kuch 500 saal logo ko lage use evolve karne mein use apni zindagi mein shamil karne mein use is qadar transform karne mein that it could be really helpful for them and then the tools like axes like plowshares ye sari cheeze hame nazar aane lag gayi and they were very important for the purpose of agriculture new tools transportation system dheere dheere boost karne lag gaya so with the discovery of iron when the tools were more feasible to be used utilized agriculture became easier to jab aapke paas saman acha aa jata hai for example production ki agar industrialization ki baat kare when machines started coming into the picture earlier also production used to happen manufacturing pehle bhi hoti thi but with the factories and the industries and the machines coming into the picture it only increased to a great level bilkul boom karke nikalta hai bahut zyada hone lag jata hai scale bahut badh jati hai similarly over here also with the iron coming into the picture and people figuring out how they can move using the animals transportation naye naye kiye ja rahe the methods travel karne ke agriculture bahut zyada increase kar jata hai variation ke sath which means people now started experimenting growing multiple things and at a larger scale and at an advanced level and uh, the iron and the iron plow share played a very very important role over there okay sham absolutely i am teaching you in english and if i uh, even if i'm saying something in hindi don't worry i will repeat it in english for few students they prefer hindi so i'll be bilingual right main dono languages mein padhaungi so naturally we understand when all of this was happening all the production was happening all the growth was happening now that would also lead to establishment of settlements ab kya hoga settlements will start happening log ikatta ek jagah pe rehne lag jayenge communities will start forming which ultimately will lead to a formation of a leader in these settlements and formation of kingdoms धीरे धीरे अब लीडर भी बनेगा इस कम्युनिटी का फिर वहां से किंगडम्स बनने लग जाएंगे सो द डेवलपमेंट फर्दर लेड टू स्टैब्लिशमेंट ऑफ होल सेटअप ऑफ किंगडम्स पूरी पूरी जो है राज्य अब बैठने लग जाएगी बनने लग जाएगी नाउ इरिगेशन वर्क्स की अगर बात करें फिर ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ डिड इरीगेशन वर्क बैक एट दैट टाइम हाउ वो पीपल ट्राइंग टू बच्चे आई एम नॉट श्योर मैनस वी एफ यू सीन अ टूल इट विल बी डिफिकल्ट फॉर मी टू शो यू अदरवाइज इट्स अ टूल लाइक दिस विथ विच द प्लाउइंग इज डन सो बेसिकली वैन यू ट्राई टू प्लाउ द फील्ड दे इज एन आयन टूल विच इज इन अ शेप ऑफ लाइक अ फ्लैट यू ऐसा एक टूल होता है आई एम वेरी बैड एट ड्रॉइंग राइट इट्स एन आयन टूल इट्स लाइक अ फोक stuff like this things like this are used for plowing the field so iron it is made up of iron because when you're trying to dig the soil which is very very you know dry and very stiff 
you need a lot of strength and hence you need a very strong tool if you try to make it with wood and put it uh, through it will not work so you need it to be strong made up of metal so i made it happen right so again talking about irrigation works what do you mean by irrigation work the water supply how the water was being supplied as i told you majorly people were dependent on nature for everything they wanted to be dependent on nature not wanted that was how it was at that time rainfall was the primary source jahan se pani aata tha from where people would receive water in their fields and then hence do the agriculture but now they were also realizing even back then climate was a little unpredictable climate ka kuch nahi keh sakte the sometimes rain would be more sometimes it would be less and maybe it would not happen at the time you wanted to or expected to and you would need water at that point in time in a certain amount in your fields aapko pani chahiye hoga us waqt nature pani nahi de raha hai barish ka mausam nahi hai ya jitna pani chahiye tha nahi aaya how will you manage it then you will have to figure out methods that through which you can bring water to the field if the nature is not doing it naturally nahi ho raha hai to aap apne tarike se kaise pahunchaoge theek hai आरोध्या ऑफ कोर्स आरोधी आरोधे आई एम नॉट श्योर बच प्लीज हेल्प मी विद द प्रोनाउंसिएशन ऑफ योर नेम एक्स सिकल ऑल ऑफ दीज थिंग्स वर आल्सो बीइंग यूटिलाइज मतलब वेरी वेरी फ्रीक्वेंटली बैक एट दैट टाइम फॉर किलिंग कटिंग यू नो हार्वेस्टिंग इन सारे पर्पसेस के लिए ऑल ऑफ दीज टूल्स फॉर मेड अप ऑफ आयन सो वाइटल इरीगेशन सिस्टम्स लाइक कनाल्स वेल्स टैंक्स एंड आर्टिफिशियल टैंक्स आर वॉट एग्जिस्ट टूडे राइट वी हैव ऑल ऑफ दिस टूडे but these systems were essential for agriculture sustenance for the survival of agriculture for uh, for the agriculture to happen back at that time also but of course in the beginning people were not aware of how to go ahead with it right but then they slowly slowly started discovering this they slowly slowly started figuring out that okay if there is a water body here somewhere and i create a system like this i will be able to bring water to my fields if i create a channel which then became a canal right if i create a small channel kind of thing if i cut the soil from the river till the fields then the water will automatically start moving towards the field and i can block it and remove the block any time i want mujhe jab chahiye us block ko hatao to pani field tak pahunch jaye aur jab block lagao to pani ruk jaye so people were now trying to figure out methods and were coming up with all of these methods to make the water reach to the fields even when it was not happening naturally three different kinds of people now if you talk about the people who lived in ancient india so if you understood that iron was being discovered new tools were being invented it definitely led to more production it played a very crucial role in establishment of kingdoms and then how agriculture was progressing with all of these developments and new innovations if you talk about the people who lived at this point there are three different kinds of people bachche who lived in villages in the southern and the northern parts of the subcontinent what do you mean by the subcontinent you guys who will tell me subcontinent ka matlab kya hota hai what do you mean by the subcontinent when we say subcontinent what exactly are we referring to anyone guys meaning of subcontinent smaller than continent yes but whenever you hear the term subcontinent especially when it is in and around india what we are referring to is the indian subcontinent kis cheez ko hum refer kar rahe hote hain jab bhi aap subcontinent dekhoge you will basically understand we are talking about the indian subcontinent so basically as your right continent is the big bigger masses of land subcontinent is refer to a smaller piece of land but it is smaller than a continent so india bachche india earlier we definitely had bangladesh and pakistan as a part of india itself apart from that a lot of portions let's say let's take bhutan myanmar which was burma then your uh, sri lanka maldives all of this these places if you put together it is not as big as a continent but definitely forms a huge piece of land these countries taken together right so these countries together are referred to as indian subcontinent which means 
portion of Asia which comprises of India and the neighboring countries together which is, looks like a subcontinent refer to as subcontinent. So, when we say subcontinent we are not just talking about India, we are considering a little bit of Afghanistan, Pakistan, Tibet, uh, Nepal, Bhutan, Myanmar. So, northern portion that would be there, then Sri Lanka and the entire southern portion and the Maldives and Andaman and all of that would be the southern portion. Okay? So, north or south, dono mein, Indian subcontinent portion mein, there were three kinds of people. Okay? Yes, Manasvi, India is a India is referred to as a subcontinent and it's, it does not just count India because of the old way that it used to be. Whenever you hear, you will see a lot of places mentioning Indian subcontinent. It refers to India and the countries around together. When you want to talk about India and neighboring countries, you refer to it as Indian subcontinent. Okay. So, who were these three people and what we have to notice is that there were villages. Till now, we have not mentioned cities or towns. So, in the setup, there were three people in the First of all, there were the Velalar, then there were the Uzavar and then you had the Kadaisyar and Adimai. Okay? So, there were three segregations. Who were the Velalar? The land owners. So, you can say the aristocrats of the society, the rich people of the society, the owners of the properties. See, segregation has always existed. It's not like everything was divided equally amongst everyone. Hamesha se jo hai, society mein economical classes exist karti rahi hai. There have always been division in terms of economical classes where few people have been rich and few people not so much. Kuch log jo zyada zamindar rahe hai, rich rahe hai. Or kuch log jo farming wagera karte hai, unke liye kaam karte rahe hai. So the rich, the zamindars, the landlords, they were known as the velalar in all these portions by the way. Then you had ordinary ploughmen who were known as the Uzavar. So basically people who were now associated with the activities of farming. Also we have to keep in mind that back at this time when we are talking about ancient India, jab aap purane zamane ki baat karo, when you are talking about really old history, at that time very different kind of jobs did not used to exist. The primary work that people were associated with was farming only, production and all, manufacturing, Transportation, all of these things were not there. The enough development had not happened. It's not development. Nahi hua tha. So, primarily, you would have farmers, then you would have some traders, then you would have soldiers and warriors, and people who would work for the king. So, ye kuch gine chune jobs. They were very limited jobs that people were associated with. Okay. Because India is the biggest one, Kartik. If you look at the landscape, India is the biggest country. That is why Indian Ocean has also been named on India only and not Sri Lankan Ocean or uh, you know Burma Ocean or anything. India has the land largest portion. So, whichever country has the largest portion, you start calling things with that name. So, landless laborers including slaves were known as the Kadai Siyar and Adimai. So, at this point, slavery culture was also there. What do you mean by slaves? Gulam jo hote the. People who were owned by other human beings and would work for them like in a bonded way and whatever was asked for them to do. So, slaves were there and they were known as the Kadai Siyar and Adimai. So, you see primarily three kind of things are happening which is also dividing the society as such. Okay. So, on that note, let's first answer the very first quiz question which is Landless laborers, including the slaves, what were they known as? Gulams, Vilalar, Uzavar, or Kadai Siyar and Adimai.
Okay, and Karthik and Manasvi, good job. We have uh, Aradhe who have also answered correctly. Nagraj has taken an attempt. Uh, Madiha and Shivali have also taken an attempt. Sham uh, has also taken an attempt. I think Sham has also answered correctly. Wonderful. And they were known as the Kadai CR and the Adimais. Okay? Chalo, wonderful. Now, who were the Gram Bhojaka in ancient India? So, guys, these are the terms you'll have to remember. Thode se complex, it may sound a little complex and, you know, difficult to remember. But you will be able to, these are the things that you will have to remember. These are the terminologies that you will have to remember. The name of the slaves, the name of the other categories, etc. Okay? Okay. So, the northern part of the country had village headmen or Gram Bhojaka. So, Gram means village as you guys know. And Bhojaka ka matlab kya ho jayega? Head you can say. So, there were people who were like the heads of the uh, villages and at this point there are no cities. So, it should be easy for you to in a way remember. So, in the northern portion however, it was not there everywhere. It was majorly in the northern portion. They were known as the Gram Bhojakas. So, how we have the Sarpanch and the head, Mukhya, all of these people now. Earlier, they were known as Gram Bhojaka. And the men from the same family held the position for generations and post was hereditary for Gram Bhojaka, which means that generational ruling in a way was there. So, it is similar to monarchy in a way. However, it is not full full monarchy because there are village heads and not heads of kingdoms. Kingdom ke head ki tarah nahi hai, village ka head hai. Kaisa hota tha? If I am the Gram Bhojaka, then my child will be the Gram Bhojaka. Then their child will be the Gram Bhojaka. And like that, the fam members of the same family, generation on generation, will be taking this position. It will no election, no changing, no new person coming in would normally happen. If there is one family who has started beheading the village, their family will keep heading the village and was the largest land owner and had a lot of slaves. So, in a lot of ways, they sound like a king to us, right? The only difference is they don't have an entire kingdom, but a village to head. He hired workers to cultivate the land and was powerful. Naturally, the richest person, largest land owner means also what? The richest person in the village. And the richest person will have a lot of slaves, a lot of workers, a lot of slaves, a lot of power with the money. And because there are this so much of land, you cannot work on it all alone. You are also very rich, you wouldn't want to work on it. So, you will now start hiring the landless laborers. The landless laborers will work as your, uh, you know, labor and will cultivate your field, will do all the production and farming. King often used him to collect taxes from the village. He functioned as a judge and a policeman. So, what are we understanding? There is a kingdom. Bada kya hai? There is a kingdom, which means a proper dynastic land which is being ruled by a king. Usko king rule kar hai. Now, this kingdom has been divided in multiple villages. So, there are small segregations, small divisions of villages and each village has a headman as well. This headman also is a generational ruler just like the king. Raja kaise hota hai? Generation on generation rule karta hai. Waise hi with the headmans also this used to happen and they were known as the Gram Bhojaka. In the village they were the head, they were the richest, had the maximum land and they used to help the king. So, you can think that they were like a subordinate, they were like the representative of the king in the village. Wo king ke ek representative ban ke head ki tarah village mein baithe the aur waha pe used to help the king in taking the taxes money collection and also if anything goes wrong in the village instead of the king the village headman would become the police also would become the judge also and take calls in case of any crimes any disputes that would take place then there were the grihapatis grihapatis were the small land owners so griha say you can remember griha are houses gram is village so, houses ka kya hoga bache? Gram if is village in Hindi and Griha is house in Hindi, then we definitely understand that village is bigger than a house. 
and there are multiple houses in a village. This is one trick to remember this. So, Grihapati, the man, okay, the man, the owner of the home, Griha, they were small land owners in villages and they were different from the Gram Bhojakas. They played very important role in agriculture and village life. So, we understand that there was kingdom, then there were villages and then there were farming lands you can say in the villages, farming lands in different households. So, there would always be heads to look after these. So, here the king will look after the kingdom. Here Gram Bhojaka will look after the villages who will be under the king. And then you would have the Grihapatis who will look after agriculture and you know how village function and administration and everything else is going on and would be uh, having less land and less power than the Gram Bhojaka, than the headman of the village. Then there were the Das Karmakaras who were the men and the women who did not have any land or had and had to earn a living by working on the field owned by others. So, if you remember the term that we read earlier was about the slaves. Slaves were the people who had owners, who were bought. Okay, gulam jo hua karte the. But not everyone was a slave. The other people were regular laborers, the daily wage workers, people who do not have their own land, who will have to work on a daily basis in order to get the money to survive. So, these were the people who were landless, but were not bought or owned by any other heads or individuals. They would go on a job. So, a lot of these Grihapatis, Gram Bhojakas and the big landowners, they would have huge lands. They would need people to work on it on a daily basis like a labor. So, the men and the women who would work for them were the Dasa, Das or Dasa uh, Karmakaras. So, you can say workers, they were the workers and this was the term that was given to them who used to work for the big land owners. So, they were the men and the women who used to work on the fields. Most of the village, they were also some craft persons such as blacksmith, potter, carpenter, weaver. So, two kinds of jobs they used to do. One, of course, they were landless. They did not have a land to do agriculture on and earn from the production or survive with the help of the production. So, they first of course were working as the laborers or workers on the farming land for big landlords. But apart from that, they were also people who were carpenters, barber, washermen, craftsmen and artisan who are making different kind of sculptures and you know weaving baskets, weavers, making cloth, people who are doing basic manufacturing job at a very very low level. So, blacksmith people who would work with making of iron tools and all, okay, potters people who would make the mud pots, mud utensils because at back at that time utensils were not prom primarily made up of metal but of mud. So, wo banate the, carpenter would make furniture, weaver make clothes. So, manufacturers of manufacturers or producers of daily life supplies. People who would work to earn their living and would manufacture these things which people would buy and hence they would survive like that. Can you imagine these days people who have factories of clothes and utensils are so rich but back at that time they were individual producers and were not really rich and were known as the dasas, right? Okay, so now here comes the next question. Dash functioned as a judge and sometimes even as a policeman. Who are we talking about? King, Irons, Adimai or the Gram Bojakas.
So we have Sham and Nagraj who have answered absolutely correct and perfect timing. Wonderful. Kartik, Manasvi, Naveen have also answered correct and that too very quick. Aradha has answered correctly. Wonderful. Shrivali has taken an attempt and the correct answer is the Gram Bhojakas, right? They were the largest land owners as well. Now the earliest Tamil compositions, but early Indian cities history can be traced through Sangam literature. How do you know, get to know about history? In simple words, forget about this particular context. Agar is, is, is particular context mein baat nahi bhi karte, humko kaise pata chalta hai? How do we get to know what used to happen 5000 years back, 3000 years back, 500 years back, 1000 years back? We were not there. Enough technology was not there. There was no technology of taking pictures, making videos which can show it to us. Then how do we know it? So you have read class 6 May in the very beginning when you start reading history. The first thing that is taught to us is that there are two ways to read history. First you have the literary remains, then you have the archaeological remains. Either someone has written something and there is an account of it, right? Yes. But where do these books come from? Initially books were also not there. Printing was not there. So, either there is a literary account, somebody has written it either in a piece of paper or on the leaves or maybe on the rocks and some place. So, you have some literary evidences or you have archaeological evidences which is when you dig up uh, way inside the earth, a lot of buried things are found. Then you take them out, you do a study of them, you try to make sense of what it was utilized for, what the culture of the people utilizing those things, evidences that you have found were right then you do a tracing you do a carbon aging method say you try to find out how old is that material kitna purana hai wo, etc and that is how you figure out that okay this is how old it is and if it is a utensil we get to understand actually this is the kind of utensils people used to use you'll do other studies and by the chemicals found in the utensil you try understand what they used to eat what was the method of cooking where fire where the fire was utilized or not so on and so forth so similarly, when we do a lot of studies, as you guys said, with the help of the books, with the help of the literary materials, with the help of the archaeological remains, we do a study about it. We get to learn about it. Or if there is anything written on the, uh, you know, uh, rocks or stones or pillars like Ashoka's pillar is there. Things like that help us understand of what used to exist. But you need evidences. Now we are talking about the um, histories. History of the cities, the big, big cities that were settled in here back at that time. How do we get to know about it? There is certain literary remain. Sangam literature naam ki ek cheez hai jo humare saath reh jati hai, jo hume batati hai. So some of the earliest works in Tamil composed around 2300 years ago. So there is something called the Sangam literature which is composed in the Tamil language which ages back to 2300 years ago. And it tells us about how the civilization, how the city, how the setup used to be back at that time. So it tells us, uh, and it is these, the literature from where we get to know that there were terms like the Velars, Uzavars, the Kadaisiyar, which gives us the insight of how the life of the villagers was. Agar hume pata chal raha hai that there was a landlord, if, hume, if we get to know that there were the workers, uh, the farmers, the plowmen, then we get to know there were the slaves, these were the terms utilized, there was just generational rule for the Gram Bojaka, where are we learning all of this from? So when we go and look at the Sangam literature, it describes the whole setup and from there we make sense, Acha, this is how it used to happen, it has been recorded there. So now talking about urbanization, what do you mean by urbanization? But your urbanization is the settling of the cities. The settlements which is formed, the big, bigger than villages, is more modernized, has more of trading and hustle bustle going on, more employment opportunities, more development, farming is less and other occupations are more even in today's day. That is the different, difference between a rural area and an urban area between the villages and towns and cities. So, towns and cities did not always exist. One very primary reason that we know cities started, started existing, ek bohat bada, badi wajay, jise hume pata chalta hai ki shahar jo hai, wo aakar exist karne lag gaye te, was industrial revolution, coming up of industries and factories. Factories or industries jab banne lag gaye, tab hume pata hai ki shahar bohat sare bade bade settle huye. But before that also there were cities and towns and that also since long, 
Like even when we read about the Harappan civilization, we know that proper setups were there. Cities used to exist. There were proper drainage system. There were proper road systems, right? So similarly, over here when we talk about, we understand urbanization had started happening. So till now, everything we have read tells us that there were villages. अभी तक हमने जितना पढ़ा हम ये समझ रहे हैं कि kingdoms में बहुत villages थे. But now we have to understand that urbanization was also happening. Cities and towns were also coming up. Like Mathura exemplifies urbanization flourishing for over 2500 years. Can you imagine Mathura, which is not really uh, one of the biggest urban locations in today's date, but it was something that existed for a as a city for a very long period of time and had come up very very early. Now, what made it the city? What enabled it to turn into a city? What were the factors which led it? Which led to Mathura transforming into a city. क्या थे वो factors जिससे वो एक city बन गया? तो Mathura was a major junction of trade routes. Now we have to understand one thing. When let's say point A, B, C, D, E, F, all of them are trading with each other. Let's say B is trading with F. They are trading with E. Then this is trading with this. ऐसे करके lot of trade would happen. Right, the cities would across trade with each other in different different things. Like maybe F is trading with city uh, with village B with for clothes, whereas uh, A is trading with D for spices and food. So for different materials, you would trade. आप अलग अलग चीजों के लिए trading करोगे, अलग अलग चीजों का व्यापार करोगे. Earlier transportation was also a challenge. There was no railways. There was no proper wheels. And you know, cycle and vehicles and motored vehicles, especially. So people would either uh, travel with the help of animals or would walk or use very very basic methods of traveling, just a rath hua karte the, right? Bulla cats and all. So they used to take a lot of stops also. So at this point, what would happen? So I'm at so okay, no worries. Do watch what we have done before. We have done a major chunk of the session already. So there was a city which was Mathura in the middle, which would help trading happen everywhere. So you can also say that people from B would come at Mathura, sell their products, and people who wanted whatever from city B would come to Mathura and buy from here. So it would become a junction. It would become a center point where everyone would come together and do the trading. जहाँ पे सब साथ में आते थे और वो ही एक market. It changed into a market place. So what probably helped Mathura was it being in the center and changing into a big marketplace, which enabled other cities and other other places around to come here and trade instead of traveling all the way together. So it would not just link places around, but it would was in center and would link the north, west, and east and north south regions. So north may the east and west region were connected, and north and south was connected with Mathura. The city had fortifications. What do we mean by fortification? A lot of forts, huge walls at the surrounding of the city. So it was properly fortified. A lot of shrines were there, and attracted farmers and herders from nearby areas. So one thing, even in today's date, what is the city that provides you that villages don't and attracts a lot? The infrastructure, big buildings, bridges, all of these things. The fancier it is, the bigger the city is, and the more it attracts people. Back at that time, big buildings and all of these things were not there. So there were shrines, there were forts, there were good roads, there were marketplaces, and for all of these reasons, more and more people would get attracted to Mathura and come and travel here for the trading purpose. Only transforming this into a bigger and bigger place. Ultimately, transforming it into an urban area, like a city. Okay, Mathura served multiple purposes. So it's not like it was just a marketplace. It was a trade hub, but it was also a religious center. It was also a place where sculptures were produced, and of course, of the Kushanas, the ruling that was happening. It was the administrative capital, like how Delhi serves for India today, right? So it had that importance as well. It was a place where a lot of Buddhist monasteries. What do you mean by monasteries? The worshiping place of the Buddhists, right? So Buddhist monasteries were there. The Jaina shrines were there, and was in fact a very significant place for Krishna worship. 
So even in today's date, guys, you might have heard about Mathura. It's very, very famous for worshipping of Krishna. And Mathura comes from there, right? So Mathura had for various religions a very important significance and importance which would attract people around. Then it was a trade hub. Then it was a religious hub. So for all of these reasons and then it was very, very well developed in infrastructure and it would only bring more and more people in there. Now, Sham, Manasvi and I think uh, Kartik or somebody has asked questions. I will answer this. Let me come to the quiz question, Bache. I will answer all your doubts. So, uh, Mathura, which is more than 2500 years old, it was at perfect crossroads. What do you mean by crossroads? Where all the roads are meeting at one point, like a perfect junction. It was right in the center. Naturally made it a very influential place because it was easy for everyone to reach. It was in the center. People did not have to go from one corner to the other corner. They could just travel midway where transportation was already a challenge. Right? It became the second capital of the Kushanas around 2000 years ago, which showed its political importance as well. So it was not just a trade center, but capital Banke bhi, it became very, very important and was known for production of sculptures and art. Back at that time, sculptures, art, paintings, it was the kings and everyone used to be huge patrons, huge collectors and you know, they would encourage more and more making of this. They would buy more and more uh, of the paintings and the art and the sculpture. So a lot of production would happen here. For example, in today's date we say, right, like Rajasthan is a great producer of, of marble. So you will go to buy that over there and there would be cities which would be popularly known for it. Similarly, back at that time, there were not a lot of places which were doing that. So, sculptures and arts were majorly produced here. Okay? Let's go, now we will ask another question. The question says, Mathura was a Roman trading settlement. It was a settlement, but it was a settlement which was for Roman trading. What do you mean by it? Okay, Sham is fortification, building walls. Bache, Sham, uh, fortification basically is not really building walls, but uh, forts, the walls of the forts and a lot of places back earlier were basically completely covered with the walls of the fort. Okay, I bade bade walls in cities ko pehle ghera jata tha. Usse hum keh rahe hai as, uh, what do you say? Fortifying the walls. Uh, I mean, like the walls were fortifying. scroll okay Aradhe has asked ma'am where is Mathura in modern day but Mathura is in Uttar Pradesh you might have heard a lot of people going to Mathura and uh, uh, I'm forgetting the places nearby for worship of Krishna so, a lot of people go uh, in all of those places. In fact, it said that Krishna was born in and around there and had some connections over there. What is a shrine? Shrine basically is a place which is related to uh, religion. It's considered to be a holy place. So, ha having religious uh, significance. Okay. Second capital mean administrative capital. Or rather, you can say that yes. So, the main capital city would be some other place, but there were uh, a lot of places you will find different, different capitals, right? Some would be administrative capital, some would be finance capital. So, where say it became the capital later. 
So we have Sham who have who has answered absolutely correct. Kartik, Manasvi, Navin, Shivali, wonderful, and Aradhe also. Nagraj and uh, Madiha and Soumya have taken um, an attempt, and it is false. It was not a Roman trading settlement. It was a settlement that, of course, belonged to us only. Okay, guys. So one section, one last section, which is inscriptions that were found in Mathura. I'll actually be do and the coins will be doing in the next session because we are running out of time. These two things, very small topic, will do in the next session. Now coins are dependable and simple to exchange for anything. So these were able to trade and function more efficiently. So coins also will discuss about how it made the life of the people. Vrindavan, yes, Karthik, thank you, Vrindavan. I was forgetting Vrindavan. So Vrindavan and Mathura are very close to each other. Like Mathura ki holi is very famous, and all these places are actually famous because of uh, the mythological story that we have that Krishna was born here and then he lived in the other city. So like that. So in the next session, guys, we are going to learn about the first cities and how they were maintained. We'll also discuss about the inscription and the coins. Let's quickly summarize what we have done. We read about ancient Indian villages, witnessed the advent of iron tools, which of course, uh, you know, promoted agriculture three thousand years back. Villages were huge with diverse uh, inhabitants, like landowners, labourers, craftsmen, and which all the things important for uh, survival of the kingdom. Sangam literature shows life on Indian cities and villages both. It tells us about how the cities and villages were divided. Mathura emerged as a very important city, which served for trade, religion, and art purposes for more than two and a half uh, thousand years. Uh, we have seen the inscriptions, which highlight different professions and contribute to monasteries and show the different uh, features of the society and the location. Mathura's historical significance and importance is because of its location and the various uh, functions that it performed trade religion sculpture art a hub for all of these okay now please make sure that you go and register yourself for the upcoming sessions and do not forget to be a part of our telegram channel on that note because we are uh, a little way beyond the time i'm going to end the session now thank you so much for being here i think i've clarified your doubts as well राइट right? आराधा यस yes. बट वो मथुरा में रहते थे ऐसा था ना वृंदावन में जन्म हुआ और फिर मथुरा लेके चले गए थे उनके फादर बिकॉज यू वॉन्टेड टू सेव फ्रॉम कंस मामा ऐसा इट इज द स्टोरी बट ऑल दीज प्लेस आर इन फैक्ट वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड पॉपुलर फॉर रिलीजियस रेलिवेंस एंड कनेक्शन विद लॉर्ड कृष्णा ओके गाय सो विद दैट इफ यू हैव एनी अदर क्वेश्चन इन द नेक्स्ट सेशन प्लीज फील फ्री टू आस दैट आई सी यू गाइज इन द नेक्स्ट सेशन टू द नेक्स्ट टाइम टेक गुड केयर ऑफ योर सेल्व हैव अ ग्रेट इवनिंग गुड नाइट बाय अस्तल चाओ स्टे ट्यून मेक श्योर यू रजिस्टर फॉर द अपकमिंग सेशन एंड कीप एम बाई बिंग कीप एम बाई बिंग वी बिलीव इन यू